The next task is to add the SQL database. So we'll start SQL Management Studio. I leave mine on the Windows Authentication. And on Databases, select the Databases folder, right click and select New. We're going to call our database Countries DB, although it doesn't really matter what you call it. Select OK. And now expand it. We should see countries there. If we expand the countries, we'll get to tables. And we need to add two tables, one for uh, count countries and one for cities. So we'll right click new table. And for the countries, we want two, two columns, an ID and a name. So we'll call it country ID. That's going to be a number or integer. Uh, we don't want to allow nulls. I'll come back to that in just a second. And we also want the name. So that's going to be country name. That's going to be a Bavarchar 50. We'll leave that. And we don't want to allow nulls there either. Now, on country ID, select the country ID. We want to make that the primary key. So we select the, co select the, select the column and click the set primary key button. But we also want that to be an auto incrementing uh, field. So in the bottom part here, we go to identity specification, select identity and change that to yes and leave the increment as one and the starting uh, number as one. That's fine. So we'll save that and we'll call it countries. The next table we'll need is to record the cities. So again, if I go over to tables over here, right click a new Now for the cities, we want to have an ID, uh, a name for the city, and we're also going to record the population. But we will also want to link the city to the countries, the, the country that it's associated with. So we'll put in the country ID and we'll use that as the link between the city and the country. So let's start off with the ID. It's an integer. We don't want to allow nulls. We'll come back and set the primary key. We want a link to the country ID. If I could type. That will also be an integer and we don't want to allow nulls there either. We want the city name. And we'll have that as a var char. We also won't allow nulls there either. I make it by by not allowing nulls, we'll make the city name compulsory. And we want the city population. That's going to be an integer. And we don't want to allow nulls there either. Now on city population, if we're not allowing nulls, uh, we need to give it a default uh, value. So I'll just set the value down here as zero. Then if somebody tries to leave that field blank, it'll not be left with a blank, it'll be left with a zero. Right, we want to come up here, make the city ID the primary key. Uh, and we also want to set, set it to be a auto incrementing. So we'll set the identity to yes and leave the, the, the increment and seed as one. I'll save that and give it a name of cities. 
Now, we've said in here that the, we're linking to the country ID, uh, but simply having a field called country ID is not sufficient. It's not going, the, the, the database isn't going to link it automatically with the country's table. And for that, we need to set a relationship. Now, we could do this in by using a, a, a SQL script, or we could use it by clicking this button up here and using this little pop-up window. So we need to add a foreign key and we're adding the foreign key to the cities table. So we click add, it'll come up with a default name, that's fine. And if we click on this field here, tables and columns spec or specification, a button with an ellipsis appears, select that. And it's asking us for the primary key table. The primary key table is the table that's going to be the on the one of the one to many side. So that'll be countries because one country will have many cities. And the ID of that is country ID. And we're going to be linking that in the cities table, the foreign key table to the country ID there. So having got those selected, click OK. And there's one other thing we ought to do while we're here. Under insert an update specification, if a user deletes a country, that country might have one or more cities associated with it. If they delete the country, we want the system to automatically delete the cities. We don't want the cities left behind uh, with no associated country. And to do that, on this delete rule, we say we want to cascade. And that means that if we delete a country, any, any cities linked with it will also be deleted. We could also set an update rule, but the ID on the country is not going to change. Once it's, up, once it's there, it's never going to be updated, so we don't need to take any action on that. So we close, save everything, and we can close these two, and we could close SQL Server. Um, but we'll now, if we expand tables, we should see we've got cities and countries. So that's it for this stage. The next stage will be to link the SQL tables with our C Sharp Blazor application. If you haven't already got Visual Studio open, open it and then open the Blazor Countries project. We're going to connect our project to the SQL Server database uh, using a SQL connection string. The easiest way to obtain this is to select view, select the SQL Server object explorer, and if the SQL Server isn't listed here already, if you right click and add SQL Server, select local or wherever you happen to have your database and select the, the server where we created uh, our, our country's DB database. Select connect and we can see the server here. O expand uh, the server, expand the databases and you should see country's DB. Expand that and then right click countries DB and select properties. The properties pane will open and in the general section, about halfway down, you'll see connection string. Click in the value for the connection string. We're going to need this connection string and it's quite long and complicated. Uh, I suggest you copy it uh, and, and we can then paste it back later. So select control eight, selected everything, control C to copy. I've got notepad open and I'll just paste it in there to save it temporarily. Right, we can now close the properties pane and the SQL Server Object Explorer. Now the places we're going to need to uh, enter this information, uh, first of all, in app settings, we need to add a section in here called connection strings. So first of all, you need to add a comma after allowed hosts if it's there and then connection
strings colon open curly brackets we give it a name which we're going to call SQL DB context that could be whatever you want to call it but we'll be using it later so maybe best to, to leave it as is and this is where we paste in the connection string and that's it for this one so we'll save that and close it actually we won't close it <laughs> um, I just want to make sure that that, that SQL DB context is visible because we'll need that in a, in a second in the data folder we need to add a new class so right click add class and we're going to call it SQL connection configuration select add and in here we just need a couple of couple of couple of lines um, and I've got these in notepad plus plus to save me typing it all out so that's fine we'll save that and the other place we need to make a change is in startup.cs where we need to add down here a couple of lines again I've got it in notepad plus plus to spare you the sight of me typing that in you'll notice here the SQL DB context that we entered in the, as the connection string name is what we enter in here so if you've changed it in uh, the connection string make sure you match it here save everything and that's it for this section um, but no harm in building the solution just to make sure nothing's broken that looks fine right the next section uh, is creating the the dapper code uh, to to interface with the SQL database but we can close everything here and get onto that later one last point uh, the code that we've entered here is available on the blazercode.uk website on the SQL connection page.